Hey there, everyone. This is Sean Wildermuth of Wilder Minds and Floral Sight. I wanted to just give a really quick video of how to get yourselves into View 3. We're in the beta phase right now with the RC probably coming at the end of July of 2020. This is going to be recorded about the middle of the month. Uh, just if you want to get up to speed, take a look at just what View 3 is going to look like and show you how to get that working. Once the release candidate is out, I'll try to update this video to show the new way. But in this beta phase, there's a couple of hoops to jump through. If you're curious about what the code we're actually looking at, it's at GitHub Vue.js slash Vue Next. This is actually the View 3 version. And there's also other repositories for Vuex as well as the Vue Router. Let's just start right in PowerShell, or you could be in any console really on Mac or Linux. Everything I'm going to be doing should be pretty much the same on all three of them. I'm first just going to do and make sure that my NPM is updated, and it usually is because I do it pretty often. I'm also going to update view slash CLI. I have it installed globally just to make sure we have the latest version of CLI because we will need that. We're going to start by just creating a really quick project. And I'm going to say view create. I'm going to say no git because I don't want to get repository in this case. I'm going to say bear to make sure that we don't have any of the boilerplate. And I'm just going to call it view three start. And I have a preset already created, which is just Babel router and ESLint. You want to do the full view or you want to use TypeScript, all of that's going to be supported. But I'm just going to use this quick example version and let the CLI go ahead and install everything. I'm gonna cheat a little and speed up this process so you don't really see it installing everything because that can actually take a little while. And so now we've got the project created, I'm gonna go ahead and just go into that view three start folder. We can see it has just a quick standard project already created. And before we do anything else, we want to upgrade it to view three. We don't need to run it. We don't need to start it. We can just say view add view next. View next is an extension to the project that changes it to use the beta version of view three. And you can see what it's done is it's updated it to view three as well as adding view router four and view X four are aligned with view three. So let's just use Visual Studio Code to look at this project. Here we have project.json, we have source. And one of the first things I like to do to the project JSON is you can see here it's looking at certain versions of Vue 3 and of Vue Router. I actually like to change these to say greater than and just say beta. And this way it'll load the latest beta that's out there. And I'll do the same thing for the router. Uh, the router is actually in beta as well, so I'll change that to beta. And if I just open up a console real quick, I'll just say npm install to get the latest versions of those. And then we can just use npm serve to go ahead and run this as is. We're going to leave this serve running so that it can go ahead and respond to any changes we create. Let's go over to a browser because you'll notice, just like before, it's going to actually use this address to expose it. If we put that in here, we'll see a very simple version, two pages of our view app. Now that we're using view three, believe it or not, and let's look at the source. The source, if you've done view before, this should be really comfortable. The main is changed a little from the original in that it's using using the router and mounting directly from a new call called create app, which creates the object instead of saying new view. But we can leave that. We're not going to make any of those changes. And then let's look at the views themselves. So in our home view, we can see that because we did such a bare one, it doesn't even have a script attached to it. It just has some really simple code. So let's go ahead and add a script. And here we want to, normally you might do this, right? You might say data name equals Sean, right? All good. But because this is view three, we can certainly use without having to add any extensions or plugins, we can actually just use setup, which is the new way that the component API does this. The idea is that instead of having a configuration object that is all adding different con configuration in these sort of magic places in an object, setup is going to say that we're going to expose data to the view object 
by just returning this one object and then using closures in order to have the relationship between the object. Let me show you what that looks like. So let's go ahead and create that same name thing where we we're going to do before, right, with Sean. But in view, you're going to need to actually tell it that you want this to be wrapped. So we're going to use something called a ref. And this ref comes from view. This is basically saying that we have a name, we want to be able to monitor its change. And so that's really what ref is doing. It's just creating it as a JavaScript proxy, if you want to think about it in that way. And then at the end of setup, we're going to return an object that just contains all of the pieces that we want to deal with. Now, you might think that this is just the same as returning data, except we're being forced to add this ref. But let's do something else. Let's have a function that says on click, for lack of a very clever name. Inside on click, instead of having that magic this pointer, we're just going to use the closure because they're both sharing a scope here, right? This outer scope is visible to the center scope. So I can just say name dot value and it's named dot value because it's being wrapped as a ref equals name dot value plus and let's just put a plus sign at the end of that, right? And here we can go ahead and add the on click as well, so that both the methods and the data are being returned as this bindable object. So it's a little easier. It also will allow you to build complex uh, parts of this in their own files that you can import, which was really difficult without the composition API. So let's just create a quick div here and we'll put name there. None of that should be a surprise. And then we'll create another div here and create a button, click me, and then at sign for the, to handle an event. And we're just gonna say on click, right? And so we're binding this and this as objects that are bindable because they're in that return object. So anything that you need to refer to up here needs to be really returned. Not everything does. There may be cases where it is all sort of internal data, but it's not bindable itself. They just need to know about each other. And then they could all be in the setup together without having to expose them. The composition API is really allowing you to compose what is the bindable surface to your app in one scope. It's one of the reasons I like this. So if I've done this all correct, no promises, we go back here, it's already telling us, oh, there's a problem, missing an end tag. So most likely I forgot to put a div here. Let's just save that. Now we can see there's my name because I bound to it. And as I click it, it's going to add pluses. And so we have that very simple interaction that we wanted to talk about. Let's look at a collection real quick, just so you can see how both of those are handled. And that'll be about all I can cover today. So we have another object here called Let's say, just call it a collection. And I'm just gonna start with an empty collection here. There's actually another wrapper and this is called reactive. You may have not noticed, but it, reactive is part of the view object. And this is, the difference here is refs are for primitive types and reactive is for anything else. So anything that's an object, anything that's an array, et cetera, will be reactive. In fact, when you return this, this object gets a magic reactive around it as well. Reactive is different in that it's not just noticing the change of the value, but it's also noticing the change of the properties of the value. That's why reactive on something like an array or an object makes more sense. And so let's go ahead and create a function down here that says add item. So in the add new item, we're just going to use that call object we created up here. And because it's reactive, it's just a proxy. So we can actually just use push and say name equals hello world, right? So we're just going to change this every time the add item is called. And we're going to need to, because we want to bind to them, add collection and add add item to this return object because we want to use it in our template up here. Let's create a quick div here. And I'm just going to use the v4 syntax to say i in collection. And I'll go ahead and bind a key because they always want a key. And I'll say the, the name of the object because of course we're adding a name. And then inside we'll just bind i.name, right? We'll just show the name to it. So we've used the collection, but we're going to also need another button for add to collection, right? I'll use add item there. So when add item is clicked, it'll add it and it should show up. So back here, we can see that the add to collection has been added. And when we click on it, it's going to add 
to that individual item in any way. So that's a really quick, hopefully concise explanation of this difference with the composition API. And hopefully this has been helpful. I'll throw this out on a quick GitHub and you can get the GitHub link down in the description and hope you enjoyed this. Thanks.